Okay. Um, that's a little close, isn't it? Um, still on Jet Street. It's part two. Uh, so, I asked to travel into the river, which was really, really nice. And I got back and I was crying because I needed that, like, big time. I was so wrapped up, and so stressed out. And, and it was like it gave you something extra in life, you know. It was, it was nice. And it was a haunted house with bad guys, cops, and bad guys coming in. And it was in a haunted house. No one bothered me. No one touched me. No one did anything. It was perfect. So, you could be in a... And there, I'd be down in the basement. There was one time I was down in the basement. And I go, I'm going to do a little feel around this place because I haven't done that yet and uh it took me to underneath the staircase the stairs came down and I got I was standing there and I'm like something happened here and I'm like somebody hanged themselves on this staircase clearly you could feel it you could feel it and I was no ghostbuster but I just you know and I knew the black guy he died but I don't know how. And he died in the house. And he was the one that was looking out for me. But there's not a lot he could do. Except talk to me and tell me to get the hell out. So finally, I knew that the black guy died in the house. I don't know how he died in the house. Someone else died in there. And probably someone else. The ghost upstairs. I don't know. But anyway... We moved to Jeanette, Jeanette Street, and University, right across the street from the old hospital. They tore it down now. And that's where the next wave of stuff continues. And it was a lot better place. It was more lively, more fun. Or maybe it wasn't Jeanette. I can't remember. We moved in so many different places. So, Jeanette. I moved in Jeanette and I met this guy who lived next door or something. But he always came to where I worked and he knew my friends. So, since we moved in there, he, he was moving out. He was living upstairs. We lived downstairs. That's right. He was living upstairs. We lived downstairs. He helped us move. And he goes, he goes to me, he says, where are you coming from? And I go, I go, the Bruce, blah, 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 Bruce Street. And he goes, are you kidding me? I lived in that house. I'm like, really? He goes, Jesus Christ, that place is haunted. And he goes, in the walls, it's in the walls. I'm like, Jesus Christ, man. Stop, stop. I go, what's in the walls? What's in the walls? He goes, you, he goes, you see the black guy? I go, yeah, I wake up in the middle of the night and he'd be talking to him. And he goes, yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> And he, he's having, he had all the same experiences. And he goes, the water would come on in the bath. And I go, yep. Fucking 8, 9 o'clock. What's that like clockwork? And he's like, Jesus Christ. He goes, oh, yeah. He goes, that fucking place is hot. And he goes, I go, well, I ain't know so much. I go, tell me what you know. And he goes, well, a black guy, he was sitting, sitting in the living room, right where I was sitting, but across in the front entranceway, looking at the window. And he committed suicide. Blew his head off with a gun and uh he committed suicide right where i saw him that day but on the opposite he he was on the opposite side of the room where he did it and there was bikers that lived there and there was a lot of prostitutes and drugs and money and they hid either the money or the drugs i think it was the drugs a big stash and it went missing and uh, they come back all the time to see who's going, see what's going on. And I don't know, but how long ago this all happened? Like the black guy, I don't know when he killed himself, but I, I think the bikers had just moved out when we moved in. They moved out. I don't know. And then to clean the place up, 
and we moved in. And the bikers are still coming around. Well, maybe that's why the lady went crazy and called the cops on me that day. I don't know. But that blew me away. And he said, oh, there's a guy. I go, he hanged himself. I go, he hanged himself on the stairs, underneath the stairs. He goes, yep. He goes, he tied it around the top stair and kicked the chair out from under him and he hung himself. And I go, I knew it. I knew it. And we compared notes and everything. It was crazy. And I go, well, who's the one that turns the... He goes, I don't know who turns the water on. Maybe it's the black guy that turns the water on every night. We never could figure that one out. But, yeah, and he goes, the black guy who comes in the walls, in the walls. And I go, is he a biker? And they said, no, no, he was, he died before the bikers moved in. And he lived there with the bikers. So he just watched them all the time. And he was telling me, because we are just kids, to get the hell out of there. There was still a fucking a huge amount of drugs in the walls. And, uh. And that's why that guy came in, kicked my fucking dog. I wasn't going to fight him. I couldn't fight that guy. Oh, uh, I would just fucking stab him to death with a knife or something. Shoot him. But I didn't have a gun. I didn't have nothing. I was sleeping. Next thing I know, he's standing there looking at my face. But anyway, so we moved out of that place. Survived it. I survived it. Froze my ass off all winter. Jesus Christ. And... Got the hell out of that place. Everything I had was stolen. Everything. They took my fucking underwear for Christ's sakes. Couldn't even believe it. Socks, underwear, my stones. I had a crystal collection. Fucking thousands of dollars worth of crystals. Rare crystals. All gone. Meteorites, crystals. Had a whole rock collection, whole boxes of them. Don, my stereo, and my clothes. Called the cops. Cops came, took down everything I had stolen. Then they took fingerprints off the, the window where they came in that night of the party. So the party was raging upstairs. They came in the bottom window, took everything out of the basement. And then they, they were at the party, whoever they were, and grabbed other things when everyone was drunk and passed out. <coughs> and then the skinheads one night at another party raided our place. I didn't buy it. I didn't even authorize the party. I wasn't, I wasn't a part of it. I was just there since I had nowhere else to go. And the fucking gang of skinheads walked in, this big, giant, nasty one, grabbed a fucking keg of beer. And walked out the door with it. <laughs> I started laughing my ass off. <laughs> oh, well, so much for that party. <laughs> I didn't buy any beer. A whole keg, like a big ass keg. Like fucking hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Anyway. <laughs> I'm like, well, this party's over. Bye. I'm going to bed. <sighs> fucking crazy shit. I go, who invited the fucking moron skinheads over? They weren't Nazi skinheads, but they were just, you know, looked at us like fucking sheep or whatever. Oh, they're just civvies. Like, they're the fucking, they run around and act like they're fucking white su fucking supremacy fucking working class fucking, I don't know. They're fucking nuts. Just moron. And they stole all our shit. <laughs> stole a keg of beer. <laughs> And the one guy that fucking carried it out was the size of a fucking brick shit house. I was <laughs> nasty looking guy. Anyway, so this is where it basically ends. Sometimes we move into Jeanette and a whole. So all the ghosts and all the things are over, and then we go into a whole new one, which is all about UFOs. So I'm going to have to go, if you want to catch up to the UFOs, you're going to have to go to Jeanette Street UFOs on uh, UFO Experience Playlist to catch the next video where this leaves off. 
and I ain't gonna make it today, so it'll be up eventually, maybe tomorrow. I gotta just I just wanted to wrap this one video up before. So let's uh, some spiritual experiences and awesome stuff. Awesome. Stuff. Okay, guys.